Let's explore the effects of temperature on the characteristic curves of a transistor. If this is your first time seeing these characteristic curves, I would encourage you to stop, look in the links below, and find the video where I explore how to use the Digilent Analog Discovery to characterize the transistor. You are currently looking at the characteristic curves for an MPSA06 transistor. Let's go ahead and add a trace and we'll call it room temperature. Now let's see what happens if I hold the transistor between my fingers. It doesn't take much. Even a little bit of a temperature change will cause the curves to drift. It's even more extreme when we use something like a hairdryer. You can see that the curves have shifted up, which means that the beta, or if you prefer, the DC current gain, increases with temperature. Stated another way, the hotter the transistor is, the more it will conduct. This also works the other way. For example, if I take a can of compressed air and hold it upside down and direct the liquid onto the transistor, this is what happens. Once again, we see a large change in beta as the temperature of the transistor changes. Let's do that again, except this time we'll capture the curves for both hot and cold. Here's cold. And here's hot. Let me change these colors around so they make a little more sense. So cold is blue. And we'll make hot red. So here's the hot transistor. You'll notice this two volt mark, which we explored in the previous video, is at a current of 25 milliamps. Whereas if it's cold, that two volt is somewhere around 18 milliamps collector current. This is important for the circuit designer because the cold to hot difference in a transistor is almost as if you had replaced the transistor with something else. When it's hot, the DC current gain is high. When it's cold, the DC current gain is low. This also has implications for circuits where the transistors are in parallel. If you don't take care, one transistor will pull more current, making it hotter, causing it to pull more current, making it get hotter, and so you end up with a condition called thermal runaway.